in this video, we're going to look at some more examples of Taylor series and Maclaurin series. The first series we're going to look at is a, an important series called the binomial series. It's only going to be valid when absolute value of x is less than 1. And we're going to take k to be a fixed real number. It does not have to be an integer. In fact, usually it is not an integer. And we're going to define f of x as 1 plus x to the power of k. So it looks like a binomial. All right, so we have 1 plus x to the power of k. Uh, but k in this case is any real number. k could be radical 2 or pi. Well, I can still use the power rule when I take the derivatives. And sure enough, there's a pretty clear uh, pattern here for the nth derivative of f of x. And so we can get the coefficients for our Taylor series or Maclaurin series using this formula. Now, in fact, we're going to borrow the notation from the binomial theorem, where uh, we use this big parentheses with a k and an n in a column like this. And we say k choose n. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, this is something that comes from counting or combinatorics. Uh, but it is very useful shorthand notation and has uh, essentially the same definition as k choose n in the binomial theorem. Now the formula itself is a little bit uh, confusing to look at. So let's just look at what the first few coefficients would be. So uh, the constant coefficient for the uh, Taylor series or Maclaurin series would be 1. The uh, first coefficient or the coefficient on x would be k. The coefficient on x squared would be k times k minus 1 over 2. The coefficient on k on x cubed would be k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial and so on. So the Maclaurin series for this function would be the summation n equals 0 to infinity. k choose n is the coefficient times x to the power of n. Um, to show why we can only use uh, absolute value of x less than 1, let's look at the ratio test. If I look at the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms, it simplifies to absolute value of x times in the fraction k minus n over n plus 1. And as n goes to infinity, that goes to the absolute value of x. And so by the ratio test, we will get convergence when the absolute value of x is less than 1. Uh, from this ratio test, notice that we get a really nice way of calculating the coefficients, they satisfy this recursion formula. If I've calculated c sub n, I can calculate c sub n plus 1 by just multiplying c sub n by the fraction k minus n over n plus 1. So let's look at an example. We'd like to find the first seven terms of the Maclaurin series for f of x equals radical 1 plus x. Now we could go through and take all the derivatives, use the definition of the Maclaurin series, but it's a lot easier if we recognize this as being a binomial series with k equals one half. So remember our first coefficient is one, our second coefficient is k, which is just one half. Uh, the next coefficient will be one half well, k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial. And that works out to be negative 1 eighth. And then I would take k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial. But I could have just taken c sub 2 times k minus 
2 over 3. In either case, I get 1 16th. So now I'm going to use that formula for the rest of my coefficients. I'm going to say that c sub 4 will be c3 times 1 half minus 3 over 4 to get negative 5 over 128. C sub 5 would be C sub 4 times, well, K minus 4 over 5. So that gives me uh, 7 over 256. And I'm asked to find 7 terms, so I need one more coefficient. And that turns out to be negative 21 over 1024. So uh, here are the first 7 terms of the Maclaurin series. We'd like to evaluate this integral, the integral of arctan of x squared, uh, as a power series. So previously, we found that arctan of u was this power series as an alternating series. And we had u to the power of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So I'll replace u with x squared, simplify that a little bit, and then all I have to do is integrate that power series term by term. I'll just use the, the power rule. So um, I made a mini mistake here. Let me go ahead and work this out then. Power rule would say that I'm going to add one let me just see if I did that. I did. Okay, so didn't make a mistake. That's nice. Add 1, I get 4n plus 3. Divide by the 4n plus 3. And then, of course, have a constant of integration. Let's use a power series to evaluate, or a couple of power series, this limit. Now, I know we don't need... Um, power series to evaluate this. This is an indeterminate form. Uh, it'd be a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. Um, so we could use L'Hopital's rule, but let's just practice using series to see another application where series can be used. So 1 minus cosine x would be 1 minus, and then here's the Maclaurin series for cosine of x. Uh, so when I work that out, what happens is the 1 minus 1 makes 0, and then I get even powers of x, but the signs will have changed. And then 1 plus x minus e to the x would be 1 plus x minus, here's the Maclaurin series for e to the x, and I see I have the 1 plus x minus 1 plus x. So I'm left with the negative power starting with the x squared over 2 factorial. And so now if I take that ratio, I can see that the dominant term, remember I'm looking at the limit as x goes to 0, the dominant term is going to be x squared. So let me go ahead and multiply top and bottom by 1 over x squared. And so I can see then I'm left with a 1 half over negative 1 half and then a bunch of terms that depend on x. Well, now this is no longer an indeterminate form. So I can just use direct substitution. And as x approaches 0, that's going to approach 1 half over negative 1 half. And so my limit value is negative 1. So let's try to evaluate this integral from 0 to 1. We have a definite integral of e to the negative x squared dx. And we know that e to the negative x squared does not have a closed form antiderivative. So we're going to have to use some sort of estimation. Might as well use the power series. We can get the exact value as a power series. Uh, but we just like to get an approximation which has an error less than 10 to the minus 4. So. We'll start with our power series for e to the u. We'll replace u with negative x squared. That gives us an alternating series with even powers of x. 
And so now we can integrate that power series term by term. I don't need a plus C because this is a definite integral. I'm going to evaluate this from zero to one. And when I put in zero, I just get zero. So when I put in one, I get this uh, alternating series here. And this would be the exact value, but we're asked to find an approximation, uh, which is, it has an error smaller than 10 to the minus four. So let's take advantage of the fact that this is an alternating series. If I want my uh, residual to be less than 10 to the minus four, I just need to have this uh, b sub n plus one be less than 10 to the minus four. So let's go ahead and use some technology and calculate some of the values of b sub n. I can see that uh, when n equals six, b sub n plus one, that'd be b sub seven, is smaller than 10 to the minus four. So I'll just add up everything up to b sub six. So b sub zero through b sub six, which gives me about 0 0.74682. Let's find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals the natural log of one plus x. We could use the definition and calculate derivatives. It's not really that hard. But let's remember some of the things that we've done before. Uh, we started off with this idea of the uh, geometric series in u equaling one over one minus u. And uh, we can see that the derivative of the natural log of one plus x is one over one plus x. So therefore, natural log of one plus x plus some constant will be the antiderivative of one over one plus x. And uh, I can think of one over one plus x as one over one minus negative x. So our u value is negative x. And I can put that into my geometric series. And go ahead and integrate that geometric series term by term. And I'm left with finding the value of C. So here I just use the power rule when I integrate it term by term. And since uh, when x equals zero, natural log of one equals zero, I'm left with zero plus C equals zero. So C equals zero. So we have a power series now for the natural log of one plus x. Now notice that uh, these terms here, x minus x squared over two plus x cubed over three minus x to the fourth over four, very nice pattern. And in fact, when x equals one, we're gonna get the alternating harmonic series. One minus a half plus a third minus a fourth should be plus a fifth Let me change that, alternating, and so on. And so we've previously shown that the sum of the alternating series was natural log of two, and now using the Maclaurin series for the natural log of one plus x, we have verified that result. In our last example, we're going to evaluate this integral as a power series. We have in the integrand x cubed times e to the x squared. We might be able to evaluate this using integration by parts. Not sure, but we're asked to do it as a series, and that is actually quite simple. We start with our power series for e to the u. Replace u with x squared to get this power series. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply that power series by x cubed. Remember, you can do that because really it's the n value that is changing in this series. You can, x is really fixed. And so I can multiply 
in function of x on the outside and bring it into the terms of the series. So now I've got a new power series with the exponent 2n plus 3. And I can integrate that term by term. So I have to remember to do what? Use the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. And then, of course, there'll be a constant of integration. So I hope you found this second video on the Taylor series and McLaurin series useful.